For the last video in this article on batch processing, I'm going to use Adobe Photoshop to show you how to resize a batch of 50 images and then how to add a watermark to all 50 using the same batch process. So first of all I need to get to the folder, so if we double click on the grey area it brings up the folder that I'm interested in. These are all the images that I'm going to be changing. At the moment they're all high resolution, they're far too big for the internet, so I need to, to alter them all and reduce the size of them all. What I've actually done here is created a, another folder called Web Size, and that's where the altered image is going to go. I don't want to overwrite the original photos. Now, to get the action running, I just need one image to, to create the action for which I'm going to apply to all the rest. So if I open this first image here into Photoshop, and then go into the Actions palette here to, to start the action recording, we need to create a new action within the default Actions palette. If I go down to the bottom here, there's an icon called Create New Action. If I click on that, it opens up this box here. Now I can call this action anything I want. I'm going to call it Resize for Web 600. The reason I've called it 600 is because I'm going to set the images all with a height of 600 pixels, which is good to fit on a computer screen. So that's that bit done. The next one here, the sets, they're all going into the default actions palette. That's OK. I'm actually going to assign a function key to this action and I'm going to assign function 2 to it. The reason I do that is if later on I have just one image that I want to resize I can load into Photoshop, hit F2 and it automatically resizes it with 600 so you have to have a good memory and remember what uh, functions you've assigned to what actions. So there we go, that's all ready to go. If I hit record it will now start recording my action and everything I do. There we go, so it's now recording, it's not recording my voice, it's just recording the actions that I do in Photoshop. There's no actual time constraints here, so take your time and get it right. Now, what I first of all do for resizing is actually resize it here rather than in the next stage. It's much easier and much quicker. If I go to image, image size, and set the height to 600 pixels and click OK, there we go, it's, it's already done. Now if I click Control, Alt and Zero, it shows me the actual size of the image as it will appear. And that's how big it will appear on the internet, uh, onto web pages. If I wanted them that big, that's pretty cool. That's a full size um, image for a portfolio, so I'm happy with that. So that's the image resize done. I've now got to save it. And if I save it for web, which so we go into File, Save for Web, which is also Alt, Shift, Control and S as a shortcut, and click on that. Opens up the new Save for Web dialog box. This is where you can have a bit of a play and adjust the quality and size of the actual file that you're going to create. Um, basically, if you're going to image size, you can already see I've already set that in the last section, the height of 600 pixels. The quality depends on whatever quality you give the image will um, have a bearing on the size of the file. So I'm going to go mid root and give it a high quality, which is okay for the internet usage. If you wanted to give it a really low quality so people aren't likely to steal it and use it for other things and give it a really low quality setting but we're going to add a watermark anyway so it's not that important. Now that's all ready to go, it's the size I want and I'm going to set it at a high resolution so we just click save and it automatically goes into my file because I've already done a couple, it goes into the web size folder. If I come back out of here, this is the original folder it came from, going into web size, keep the same file name and click save and that's done. Now if I close this image and then go into the actions palette again and stop the recording and that's it, that's the action done and it's here now resized for web 600 with function key number 2 assigned to it so that's cool, so now what I've got to do is make sure it's saved ok, so if I go into that folder you can see here that's the one that's been saved um, these are the originals, go back into here and it's now dimensions of 600 high by 598 wide pixels and it's only got a file size of 53 kilobytes which is great for using on the internet so I'm actually going to delete that because I'm going to do it again in a sec we go back into Photoshop and now I want to assign that action to the, the rest of the images so if I go into File, Automate, Batch and um, here brings up the batch processing um, it's already set here because it's the last action I did the set is the default action the action is resize for Web 600, which is the one I've just done, which is the one I want. And here it's asking us the, the source of the images that we want to, to process. So if I go choose the folder, that folder there is the one where 50 images that I want to resize. So click OK, that's fine. Down here is the destination folder where you want the photos to go. 
Now, because we've already given it a destination, when we save the image as part of the action, we haven't got to worry about this. We can just leave it as it is, save and close, and it's done. So if I now click OK, hopefully it'll start loading and saving the images. There you go. It's now loading them, resizing them, and saving them for web into that folder. If we go into the folder, just to make sure, you can see them all appearing here for web size. And let's have a look at the file size of a couple of them. 32 kilobytes. 84, they're all under 100 kilobytes, they're all okay for web use, so I'm happy with that. Make sure they're still running. Now, while it's processing those, I'm going to pause the video and come back to you in a sec. That's those now resaved. Um, the speed in which it actually the computer will save your photos and uh, uh, go through this batch process depends on two things it depends on A, how fast your computer is, and B, how many programs you have running in the background. If you can, shut down all other programs and it'll be a lot quicker. Now, what I need to do is to, now that we've got the photos that we need, we need to add the logo using the same batch process. Now, to do this, to actually make things a lot easier, I've, I've created another folder with the logo, which is where I want the new images to go. It saves having to overwrite and, uh, and keep doing that for every single image. So, once again, we pick the first image that we want to use as a template for the, for the action, load it up, and set the action running for a new action now. We've already got the resize, let's get rid of that one tested one. Uh, we've already got the, the resize for web action, we now need to create a new one. So if we go back to the, the create new action, and we're going to call this pan logo. And that's the action I'm going to call this, and I'm going to set it with another function key of F3, so that again, if I need to do one or two images, it's a lot quicker than going into the actions and doing a batch process. Uh, set it recording. We've already selected the, the text key, so if we click in the middle of the image and get a reasonable size so it covers the image, and then I'm going to type pan logo across the middle. I'm not going to worry too much about the, the uh, typeface or anything like that at the moment. This is just for the tutorial. Uh, click OK. Now that at the moment is too thick. I like details to come through. I like to knock back the, um, the logo a bit so that people can see what's behind the writing. So if I go to the layer, layer style, blending options, I'm actually going to fade that out slightly. I'm going to reduce the opacity to 50% and click OK. You can now see whatever's behind the photo comes through the lettering, but it's enough to deter anyone from stealing it, even though it doesn't. Um, and then we need to flatten that layer to keep the file size to a minimum. So layer, flatten image, and that's the image that we, we're happy with. But now we need to save it into the new file as part of the action. So if we go to File, Save for Web once again, and then just save and go into the logo folder and save once again that's it done if I close the photo down stop the action from recording it's now created a new action for the pan logo that we can use for batch processing just want to make sure that that image has gone into there and it has, there we are it's now a 55 kilobyte file with the dimensions that I want for the internet with a faded pan logo sign on it which is great so now I need to apply this to all the other images. So once again, we're going to File, Automate, Batch. And we're going to choose a different um, source folder this time. It's going to be from the Web Size folder. Click OK. And once again, we don't have to worry about the destination because that's included within the action. So all I need to do now is click OK. And it should start adding the pan logo to all of the image. The first one had to be replaced because I'd already done it as part of the tutorial. But I'm going to pause the video once again and come back once they're all done to make sure it's OK. And that's that, they're all done. So I'm just going to go into the, the folder to make sure they've all had the logo attached. There's all the images in the new web size logo folder. Let's load them into ACDC just to have a quick scan through to make sure the logo's on all of them. You can see there, it's in the same place on all the images doesn't matter if it goes off the screen a bit as long as it's there but it's going to differ for the size of the image but the logo is there on all of them and it just shows you that the uh, the logo sorry the batch processing can be done in any program whether it's Photoshop DPP or um, ACDC they've all got their own benefits they've all got their own batch processing systems and the, this is just to give you an example of the ones that I use for, for various tasks um, I hope it's helped thanks very much